Welcome to Bible study. And last week, I'm not sure if, if you would remember, we, we, we ended up um, along the lines of a, a discussion that I'm going to try my best to recap uh, and, and hopefully still do it justice in terms of what we were discussing. But we were discussing the concept of, and, I, and I, I'm pretty sure I had somebody say, let's come back next week and discuss this. So we've kept the time for us to have thought about it over the last week and then come back again this week and, and actually try to just explore anything else that's come to mind or any, you know, any scripture or anything else that we want to, to use to support the discussion. But, but the, discu the, the discussion was along the lines of, um, you know, I think it, it's similar to something we looked at a few weeks ago, which was along the lines of, you know, what, what can or what may possibly still happen to us um, if we're already saved in terms of um, either being um, attacked or um, or, or something in that sense. Um, so I, I think one side of the argument was was really saying that, well, if, if we are saved and if we're children of God, then really, you know, whether we knew that that thing was happening or not happening at that time, we, um, we cannot be, uh, essentially we cannot be um, uh, held by, by such forces or be attacked by such forces. Um, and and that was really because the question had started from um, someone sharing that um, there was there was somebody that was looking at their past and and wondering if if they had prayed if they had known what was going on at the time perhaps could their prayer have been different um, so I think th those are the two sides of of the coin I'm not sure whether it's the same coin so if if you're one of the ones that had the coin last week, so please bring it and let's uh, let's flesh it out again, and, and then we can decide whether it's the same coin or whether you know it was something else. Okay, Brochin. Um, good evening, everyone. Good well, evening. I was the one that brought up the the um, question. Yes. And thank you for the question. <laughs> it really got us thinking. <laughs> Oh God, <laughs> yeah, um, and it was a question, but as well, I was, let me just give you a little background. So I was talking about uh, my husband and his friend and they were reminiscing about, you know, when they were in uni and some of the things they went through um, before they finally, before they finished. Now, um, so they were reminiscing, they were going back and looking at it and saying, had they known, had they been more aware, they would have prayed in some certain ways and they would have prayed earlier. And so um, so I think some people thought we were talking about it was like a matter of you know, they were being attacked and they were children of God and that, but that, that wasn't actually it. What the thing, what, 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 what I was saying was, um, okay, all right, maybe I wasn't very clear because I was talking about people very dear to me, uh, both my husband and his friend and what they went through, which was a really difficult time. And I think what they discovered as they were, as time went by and afterwards was that for quite a while, while those things were happening to them, they were unaware. What was the root cause of those things happening to them? And so it took them time to actually key into it and pray. And part of it was that the Lord actually had to reveal to them that, you know, this is the prayer you need to pray. And I, I think I gave this testimony, I'm not sure whether it was in the morning or at night, that I gave a testimony about my husband's very last paper. And on the paper, he was supposed to have it on the Monday. And on the Thursday, it was a Thursday, he started having malaria. And of course, there were medical students, so they knew what to do. They took the medicine, they took the medicine, did everything, did everything, thinking that, okay, it would lift. Malaria refused to lift. 
So he was on well Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, he was still so unwell, he was in bed. And then while lying there in bed, this anger, this righteous anger just took over him and he was like, look, tomorrow he has to be at that paper. He has to take that exam. He has to pass. And he got up angrily and prayed and prayed some serious prayer. <laughs> and as he prayed, the malaria lifted, as in lifted completely. There was no sign of malaria on him from that moment that he prayed that prayer. And he got up, he went to the cold room, we used to call it where we used to read, went into the red until almost morning. I went in for that paper. When he got the paper, it was like everything he had read was on that paper. He did the exam and he passed it. But remember that he had been through those three, four days of struggling with malaria, taking the tablets, doing everything, you know. But until he prayed that prayer before the malaria lifted. And then the question was, perhaps he should have, perhaps if he had been more aware, he would have prayed it earlier or applied the word earlier or, or, or however it was. So, so that was the background of what we we're talking about. And my question from then on was that, so what are these prayers and how do we pray these prayers when these situations come up? So he, um, definitely Jesus went to the cross for us and he bore our illnesses, he bore our sicknesses, he bore, uh, you know, everything. Um, he paid the price for us. He made the supreme, supreme sacrifice for us. And so it's not a matter of us being afraid that, oh, um, you know, um, somebody somewhere is doing, doing you or something like that. No, it doesn't matter who, 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 what it is. There's a spirit behind the, sometimes that you have to deal with. And I actually, when I was thinking about it, I just typed in onto um, that my sword, onto sword, and I put in Jesus rebuked. And it came up with five scriptures, Matthew 17, 18. The Lord, uh, and Jesus rebuked the devil and he departed out of him and the child was cured from that very hour. Mark 1, 25. Jesus rebuked him saying, hold thy peace and come out of him. Mark 9, 25. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit saying unto him, thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. Luke 4, 35, and Jesus rebuked him saying, hold thy peace and come out of him. And when the devil had thrown him in the midst, he came out of him and hurt him not. Luke 9, 42, and as he was yet coming, the devil threw him down and tear him. And Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the child and delivered him again to his father. So my thing is that, first of all, we need to be aware of these things. We cannot not be unaware of them. And secondly, we need to deal with them. Yes, we're people of faith. And yes, we live by the word of God. We know Jesus has done all, all, all so much for us on that cross of Calvary. Thank God for that. But there's a place where we have to stand up. First of all, where we have to resist the devil. I asked um, Nadia to send me what she what, what, what the write-up she had from what Papa taught the other time. And and it started with us resisting um, um, James 4, 6 to 8, where it says, submit yourselves unto God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So there's a submitting ourselves unto God, and there's a resisting the devil, and he will flee from us. And it says, draw near unto God, and he will draw near unto you. And 2 Corinthians 4, um, 10, 4 says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. To the pulling down of strongholds, one. Two, to the casting down of imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Three, to bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of uh, Lord Jesus Christ. So my thing is that these things are happening and, you know, there's <laughs> more and more stuff going on in this world right now. And we have, as children of God, we need to, when faced with these things, 
from i believe pray for instructions pray for discernment and instruction from the lord pray for awareness to know how to deal with the problems from the root cause the bible tells us that jesus cursed the free fish root and from that root it withered upward and died and then Dodgy Wi-Fi kicks in again. Okay. I, I thought it was just me, so. No, no, Dodgy Wi-Fi. Mm. Oh, Becky was taking us through this morning. Okay. We didn't, we didn't hear you for the last two minutes. Oh. Can you hear me now? We can yes. now. We, we lost oh. the last 30 seconds. Oh. Sorry, where, 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 where did I go off from? Okay, I read 2 Corinthians 10, 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God. One, to the pulling down of strongholds. Two, casting down of imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And three, bringing into captivity every thought to the ob obedience of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so I was saying that when faced with these situations, these strange situations, these things that may be caused by whatever they are, we're not really bothered because Jesus gave us power over them all. I believe there's a place to pray for instructions from the Lord. There's a place to pray, pray for discernment. There's a place to be aware of the root cause of this problem so that, or issues so that we know how to deal with them. And then there's a place to actually, secondly, I put down to pray the word of God according to instruction from the Lord. Jesus Christ cursed the fig tree and from its root, it withered up and died. So so for me, and, and, and when we look at where it says, Jesus rebuked, that was Jesus dealing with the situation. If our Lord Jesus himself had to deal with that situation, then I believe that there are situations that we have to deal with where we have to rebuke the enemy as well. I rebuke the enemy forces as well, where we have to speak. And, 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 and just to, you know, going back and remembering, you know, the teaching with Belgi this morning, uh, with Bro Belgi this morning, when he was telling us, you know, about, you know, putting all the, the whole armor of God, you know, and, um, uh, and that all of that armor of God is Jesus Christ. Because our loins girth with truth, truth is Jesus Christ. The bre breastplate of righteousness, our righteousness is in Jesus Christ. Our feet just shot with the gospel of peace. The Lord Jesus Christ is our Lord of peace. And, you know, our chest with faith. Well, <laughs> faith comes from Jesus. Helmet of salvation is Jesus that gives us salvation. Hands to the sword of the spirit, the word of God. So all of it is the word of God. All of it is Jesus. All of it is, is the word of God incarnate. So 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 that so that was what I was trying to express last week last week. And to say that. And then my question following on was actually that, you know, how do we pray about these things? And for me, I've started finding some of the answers to how to pray because by the time I saw Jesus rebuked, he just spoke. He just spoke the word. And he spoke the right word. He spoke to some and said, get out and never come back here again. And he just rebuilt the, the spirit behind whatever the manifestation was. And I believe there'll be time we'll be, times we'll be doing that. I don't think it's like the days of old when you would do a deliverance overnight and you'd be shouting, get out, get out, get out, get out. <laughs> we noticed you just, just said one word and that was it. It wasn't a long, prolonged prayer. It wasn't him getting in a wrestle with, you know, the spirit and shaking and put on. <laughs> no, no, the Lord didn't have to do that. And I believe we don't have to do that again. But I believe that we have to speak with knowledge. We have to be aware and we have to allow the spirit of God to lead us and guide us. And we have to pray the word of God because the power is in that word of God. So, um, so that's, that is what I was trying to say. And that's me. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, I, I hear different, a lot of things from what you've mentioned, to be honest with you. So maybe that's why there was a bit of, um, you know, kind of confusion last week, because you've said different things, meaning different, I mean, and it means different things as well, too. Now, one of the things I picked from what you said was um, 
you, but maybe again, you have to clarify that for me, as if you can pray for sickness not to come. I kind of picked that from what you said. And okay. I, let me finish, let me finish, please. Sorry. That the, okay. as, a, as if as a Christian, you can't be sick. There's, and I don't subscribe to that personally. You know, but I because never Bible, said that. No, I know. That's what I'm saying to you. That's why I kind of picked because that what could you have? We could have <laughs> prayed something. <laughs> sorry? That's not for me. <laughs> okay, but like I said to you, that's, I, I do say something like they could have prayed maybe before the malaria and, and the sickness came. And maybe when my, my leave, I'm not even sure. So that's why I heard that. And I'm a bit, hmm. Mm, you know. No, that's not, what, that's not what I said, brother. So what I said, what I said was that he already had the malaria. So he should have, they would, they would have, it would have been better. He, would, he prayed finally and it lifted. So I believe in this particular situation, I'm not talking about a general situation. I'm talking about this particular example. In this particular example, I feel like if he had prayed that angry prayer, only the Lord knows what he said to his Lord and what he said to the situation and what he said to, to, that made the, the change happen. If he had prayed that the night before, then probably on Saturday, he would have been up and okay and been able okay. to go and do his exam. So, so okay. that's what it, I was saying. So okay, I was saying- for long sickness. Yeah. Is that what you're kind of saying? No. Yes? Hmm? You're trying to say that it won't be a prolonged sickness. It will have been, you know, shortly. It, okay. It, if yes, you had know what to pray about. He would have dealt with it immediately. Okay, he enough. would have dealt with it at that point on Saturday. And then he, okay. would have, he wouldn't have gone into Sunday. He would have been healed by Saturday and able to read. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Longer. That's what I was saying in that okay. particular situation. Okay. Punishing training regime. Who she met today on a recent expedition. Well, it's um, an interesting debate. I think um, we need to be a little bit more uh, clear that. God is as interested in our journey as he is in our destination. Uh, he's, he, he takes us on a journey because the journey develops us, strains us, and cultivates our character. So um, he doesn't, there are certain things that you don't know uh, early. It's like a child, like a child growing, developing. There are some things you don't know. You grow up into a teenager, there are some things you know as a teenager that you didn't know as a you know, prepubescent child or, or a, an infant. Um, but after you go through teenage years, you become a young adult. And there are some things that you didn't know as a teenager that you know as a young adult. Then you become, uh, you, you become a full adult and and then you know, and you you still there are still there's still stuff you are learning, um, and then as you grow older, you are you, be, you you are still learning all the way, you know, because obviously you are dealing with the wisdom of God, which is infinite, and you are finite, and you are you are limited in your scope and all that. So so there's a growth. So I think that's where the issue of, oh, if I had known this when I was there, I would have prayed a different kind of prayer. That doesn't really come up. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's not relevant because God doesn't, he, 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 he doesn't deal with you based on what you don't know. He deals with you based on what you know. Uh, mm. He deals with, with, you, with you based on where you are uh, at this moment, you know. And remember that you, you, you talked about the fact that you know, he, he had been sick then, you know, he, 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 he called on the Lord and the Lord opened his eyes, you know, so they say there's again, it's still the same God that's going to talk that talk to him. It was he didn't, he didn't come up with the idea. It was God that worked in him to will and to do and God and it also there, there is a time and a season for everything. So sometimes I may know all the principles and all the facts and all the and pray all the right prayers 
and it's not time. If it is not time, my, I can pray till I'm blue in the face or till the cows come home to roost. And I still, the, thing, the situation won't change until the timing of God. There's a timing to everything. So we can't yeah. say, oh, if I had known this, if I had known this then and I prayed, because that it would now appear that it is our prayers that make things happen. It's not our prayers that make things happen. It's God that works in us to make things happen. Yes, so even I, I agree with prayer, that. Mm, I agree so even, with that completely, that mm, it's God. Yes. So, so I also... It, it wouldn't... It, if my giving it wouldn't, the example, if my giving mm, the example, I wasn't saying... Um, what it was, was, you know, like, you can look back and say, oh, you know, this happened to me last week and I went through this. Maybe if I'd done this this way, you know, I would have gotten a quicker result. It was just a looking back. And I, I understand. It was That's looking what I'm back saying. from I, a place of thanksgiving. It was more I, I thanksgiving that God saying. delivered us in the end. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. What I'm saying is that even that, you see, you looking back, you you just, yeah, I, I don't think you, you look back and, and say, Oh, if I had known this, it would, this wouldn't have happened. That's not that that, that that's not a, it's not it's not necessarily true because you you can know certain things and certain things will still happen. Things don't happen to okay. us because of what we know or what we don't know. It, there's a there's God's plan for our lives. There's you know yes, there are some things that we 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 cause by ourselves because we do make wrong moves. But when they in their case they were walking with God, they were not they were not walking in rebellion. They were not working in, you know. So there's no way that they 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 could they could there could have been something that if they had known they would have done beforehand. You know, I th I think yeah, everything. Yes, and, but I feel like it's a maybe, maybe, maybe they could have, and maybe not. Maybe that yeah, was God's plan that's, for them. Yeah, because so, then, yeah, that, so maybe it's yeah. not relevant. No, it's not relevant because you, you don't know that. You, what we don't work with maybe's. We work with this is what the Lord said. This is what the Lord did not say. Uh, and this is what I went through. You know, that's, you know, it, of course, there, there are a thousand maybes. Maybe if I, I took a left turn in today, I, I would have been a, a doctor, you know, or a lawyer, you know, no, but no, the, the maybes don't, they, they're not, they're not, we can't, we can't think like that. We, what, what, how we think is, I am a child of God. I'm walking with God. I'm led by his spirit. He is working everything together for my good. So I'm going to go through experiences, some that I like, some that I don't like, some that are pleasant, some that are unpleasant. But in the end, it's all working together for my good. We know, the Bible says in Romans 8, that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord. And, and this, these, are, these are two people who loved the Lord. They, so they were, not, they were not working in rebellion. You see, if, if they were working in rebellion, that's a different thing. If they're working in rebellion, you say, oh, yes, if they had not been, if they had obeyed God quickly or they had not gone astray, or they hadn't done the things that they were not supposed to do, then yes, yeah, yeah, that, that's a very relevant yes, argument. Sir. But, but, but the they, maybe but they, they was because they felt, sir. Can I just say, sir? It was because they felt that they did not know enough. They were not aware at that time. So that was the maybe. I that understand. If maybe I they had been more aware. That, no, I'm saying that, that that's not even relevant because even if they were more aware, it would still not change God's plan for their lives. You can be as aware they as could you have, want to they, be. they might have done something differently. If they were more aware, they could have done some of, taken some of the steps no, differently. No, I, 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 I don't that think might, so. I, that's that, what I'm saying. That but, I don't, well, okay, I don't believe, right. unless they yeah. made a mistake, unless they expressly made a mistake that did something that God said, don't do. Or, you know, I, then you can look back and say, because otherwise you no. just be... Uh -huh. no, no, they didn't make a mistake in life. doing what God uh -huh. said they didn't do, but they, what? they, they, they felt like they made they, the mistake was their law. Was there what praying in a particular way? No, no, no. Uh, we, we have to be. No, no. That that that, that okay. that's taking us into legalism. That's taking us into being legalistic. That where you think that it is, if it is because of my prayer that I get something. It's not. No, it's not because of your prayer. It's because of God. God's work okay. in your life. You see, sometimes you pray the right prayers. Jesus prayed the right prayers and he still went through the cross. So when yeah. we say that, oh, he, he could look back and say, oh, if he had prayed a little bit differently, maybe he wouldn't have gone through the things that he went through. No, he went. If you look at Joseph, look at David. David made some, some prayers, you know, and, and 
it, it, you know, but there were just some things that he had to go through because of where God was taking him. And I believe that looking back at their lives, those two dear people, they know that having gone through what God has taken them through, they, they, they've learned stuff that is really standing them in good stead for where God has brought them to and where God is taking them to. That's true. That's yeah, true. Yeah, so they, they look at their experience and they say, yeah, I understand now. I mean, as much as I would have liked to do it a different way, and if I, if I had done this and done that, maybe I would have got this. Out. But no, when you look back, I don't see any mistake in their lives. I, what I see is the hand of God taking them through a process to bring them to an appointed end. You know, and, and they, they look back and their lives, you know, they, they have a series of experiences that are not just beneficial for them, but beneficial to everybody around them. So it becomes a blessing. What they went through becomes a blessing because they can, they can teach people, they can encourage, they can, they can succor with the comfort with which they were comforted as they went through those things, they can comfort others. So that's mm. that's that's um, yeah, that's, my that's definitely yeah. a fact. Actually, that's that's yeah. definitely a fact. Yeah, let's mm. look at Philippians two, please. Uh, that's mm. something that came up. Let us. I read it quickly. Philippians yeah. two, um, twenty five. It says, "Yet, I mean, uh, Paul was talking this one. It says, yet I suppose it necessary to send you, Epaphroditus. I mean, Pastor will let me down the term. My brother and companion, <laughs> in, my brother and companion in labor, and fellow soldier." But your messenger and he, he that had, he that ministered to my wants, for he longed after you all and was full of heaviness, because that he had heard that he had been sick, for indeed he was sick near unto death, but God had mercy on mercy. him, mm -hmm. and not him only, but on me also, also. lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. sorrow, upon sorrow. I mm -hmm. sent him therefore more, the more carefully that when ye see him again, ye may rejoice that I may be the less sorrowful so we can see here is it kind of like encapsulates what you're saying mm. he's a man of god yeah he, he, he was sick mm. it was so paul must have been praying but paul realized that you know what it's by his mercy so it wasn't by his prayers that it was god's mercy that's why he didn't he didn't pass on and then he was able now say okay continue the journey you know he was able to so i think like what pastor was saying it's it, i don't I, I, I subscribe to what you said, but it's not about what we know, what we don't know. It's God's mm. mercy. I think at each point in our lives, God takes us through stuff and he teaches us, he trains us, and he uses those things too. But the important thing to note is that it is God that worketh in us to will and to do of his good pleasure. When you are ignorant, even when you are young, ignorant, and you don't know anything, God leads you. He takes you by the hand, just like we do with our children. When they don't know anything, we take them by the hand, we encourage them, we, we show them, and then later on they grow through the experiences and then they themselves now start to say, hmm, okay, hmm, when I was young, I, I thought like a child, I, I acted like a child, but now that I'm old, I put childish things behind me. Um, so that, that, the only thing I was, I was very categorical about, and I know that they were not walking in sin or in rebellion, so no. <laughs> the counsel of God for their lives was was playing out, even though yeah. they, they were not fully aware. Mm. Yeah, that was the testimony of it, actually. The testimony was through everything they went through, God mm. saw them through. And God That's it. Yeah, so there's no regrets. God, mm. they went through. Yes, they yeah. went through in the end. Yeah. Through everything, so, God that, no, saw them I, I through. And it was we, God. We and they know very mm. well that it was God and only God. That we got that. Through. We got that. Uh, what what we just didn't want you to say is that they were now thinking that if they had prayed, that if they had known better, they would have prayed differently and things may, may have turned out differently. But that that's not necessarily true because there are sometimes when we don't even know to even pray, and God still takes us through things. There are sometimes when we pray the right prayers and God still takes us through things. There are sometimes when we pray the wrong prayers and God still takes us through things. You know, so it just I think it just working with God and saying, let your spirit lead us in every every phase or step of our lives and that's, that's yes that's, but isn't there a chance that it's not it's not necessarily true but it's not necessarily untrue either no uh, but then you could it, it could you could do the same with anything then you could say oh if i had done this then maybe i would have become a millionaire if i you would always be doing the if maybe 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 so we, we don't do that god doesn't it doesn't encourage us to do the 
maybe he's or not. He just says, okay. look, take just, you know, be led by the spirit and I will take you through what you need to go through. You will go through stuff and it, do, it doesn't matter. You see, you, 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 say, you say maybe things would have changed, but maybe it could have been worse. Maybe it, was, it would not have been the will of God for their lives. Maybe they would have gone in a direction that God didn't want them to go in. Maybe. So we could go in any, a thousand maybes. We can't, so you can't, we can't really go down the route of the maybes. Otherwise, we'll, we'll, okay. we'll be maybe in on everything. So what we're saying is, okay, they were, the one thing you want to check is, it says all things work together for good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. So when I looked at their stories, as you shared it, I could see that they loved God. They were, they, they were not in rebellion. They were not walking in, in, in unrighteousness. They loved God. So they, uh, all, and they, had, they were called according to God's purpose. So all I can tell you is that, that the word says all things work together for good to those who, f- who fit those two criteria. Love God mm-hmm. and are called according to his purpose. And that was their case. So they, mm-hmm. it, had to work, it had to work together for their good. And mm-hmm. sometimes, you know, it, we still have not seen the, the perfection of the good because it's still working. But one thing we know is that God has taken us so far and he's going to take us the rest of the journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was just going to add that. I was just you. going to add to that, Omami, what you just said now, that they expected and we haven't reached it. It's ongoing. It, it's sweet it to it's you, ongoing. not Omami, it's sweet it to you. I beg. So <laughs> it's ongoing, you know. So it's... Um, yeah. Yeah, it, it is. It's still in 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 in, in the process, you know. Love the, one the, to you. Yeah, me back for this one. Love, yeah. love one to you. <laughs> <laughs> so I I think so because you yeah, know it, it's yeah, still unfolding. True. You know all those experiences they went through. They are where we're they, this where they are today is not the end of the where story. Going, you know yes, they're still. Yes. You know, the expected end is still coming, it's unfolding, it's evolving, yeah. you know, it's still yeah. happening. So yeah. there's still going to be lots of testimonies about, um, you know, what they went through and how and, and the purpose for which God had them go through it in that way, in that manner, you know, and for all of yeah. us, not just them, obviously, yeah. you know, yeah. so I think that's just something that. Yeah, yeah that's true. Amen. That's true. Thanks, moms. Thanks, Papa. Oh, any any other? <laughs> no, no. I think I think we have. We have uh, I think we have uh, we have we have uh, we have beaten this one where we're so it's, uh, we can let it. We can move on. Okay. Mm, thanks Everybody for. Happy? Thanks for asking. It's because it's 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 helped us to understand certain things. You know, to look at certain things in a different way. Amen. Uh, there was a question along with it. I don't know if we answered the question as well. Mm, fire away. What, what was the question? Sonia also put the question, the question. in the, in the, in the um, chap, um, in the, on the in prayer the group the other day. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Antonia put a question there, something about... Oh, yes, yes. There was a question Antonia put. That yeah, was a, fo- a follow-on. That'd be a good mm. idea to look at that, you know, something about... Yeah, can somebody the please the just of the devil. Yeah. yeah, you know, about the, if we are not on our, if we are unaware of the devices of the devil or something like that. Yeah. Okay, can somebody read it for me, please? I, 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 I remember vaguely, but I don't remember it in succinctly. So if somebody can. Uh, but um, put the last week's chart, not this week, Pastor. So yeah, the, last week. Yeah, I yes, know. yeah. So, the question. Should I read it? Should I, should I, should the male baby girl read it? Yes. Yes, please. <laughs> yes, re- read it on. Baby because boy. the two are one flesh, so it is, it is your baby question. Baby boy and baby girl. <laughs> baby boy. <laughs> baby boy is reading it for baby girl. It's okay. <laughs> but I think she's doing it, Bill. She said, um, Hello, um, fam- well, family, but she's family, that's my, uh, as Sarah would say. I had a question in light of yesterday's birth, um, Bible study that I wonder if any could shed light and understanding on. When the Bible says, for we are not ignorant of the devices of the devil, in 2 Corinthians chapter, chapter 2, verse 11, does that refer per context 
only to the forgiveness stroke maintaining love in our believer to believer relationships? If it does not and can be applied generally, what is the impact to consequence of being ignorant of the devil's devices, if any? Okay, thanks. That, that's, that's a very straightforward question to answer. The Bible has the answer to it. Hosea 4, 6 says, my people are destroyed. They perish okay. for lack of knowledge. So it, 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 ignorance is not bliss. Ignorance is not bliss. Um, and the book of Proverbs just emphasizes the importance of having uh, not just uh, facts or knowledge, but knowing how those facts work, which is uh, understanding, and then applying it uh, for the advancement of the kingdom and mankind, which is wisdom. So um, yes, there is a consequence to ignorance. Um, when you are ignorant, uh, the enemy takes advantage of you. And mm. when Paul talks about we're not ignorant, now, he was talking specifically about what, what uh, Baby Girl pointed out. He was, he was talking about that. He, he, that was what led to that statement. But the statement is actually a universal statement that the enemy, we shouldn't be ignorant of the enemy's devices in relation to what he was talking about, but also in relation to other things. Uh, and I think uh, that's why it's very helpful. Nadia helped us to understand. She took us back to a teaching that we had done on, on, on the devices of the enemy. Mm. And I think we looked at four tools that the enemy uses. I initially, the first teaching, I did three. And then I, 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 in a subsequent teaching, I added a fourth one. Mm. So uh, that there are four tools that the enemy uses. So I would like... Um, I know that Nadia would have that to hand, but I would like other people to help us. What are the four tools that the enemy uses? Since it says we shouldn't be ignorant of the devices of the enemy, uh, let, let's, what are the four tools, weapons, that the enemy uses? Deceit, I think one of them is it. Okay. Yeah. I mentioned one. Accusation. Accusation. Condemnation. Deception uh, and temptation. Uh, accusation, condemnation, deception. Okay. So you see, now, once you are aware of, yeah. of those things, once you are aware of the, those things, uh, once the enemy starts to, once you see the spirit of accusation, you just know that this is, this is the enemy at work. Once you see the spirit of deception, you know it's the enemy at work. Once you see the spirit of temptation, you know it's the enemy at work. So you're not, you not supposed to be ignorant of those things. Uh, you, you, so you know how he, those are his devices or his snares or his trap that he uses. And by the way, uh, all of these are encapsulated in one, one, one major weapon that the enemy uses. Does anybody Lies. know what that major weapon the, that the enemy uses? Lies. Yeah. Um, no, that's the lie will fall under deception. No. Is it, Stronghold. Is it fear, Pastor? Yeah. No, not fear. Thoughts? Our thoughts, maybe. Our thoughts? Imagination? Mm -hmm. No. No. Oh. It's true. You, pro you probably wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't even imagine what it is. Mm. Oh. Okay. It's the law. Oh. Ah, okay. Mm, the law. Mm. That's, so that's, that, does that mean being um, legalistic? Legalistic yeah. and mm. stuff? Or, well, or yes, it, it's 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 trying to work out your salvation through works. Mm. Mm -hmm. So it, that's that's the weapon that the enemy fashions against you is the law. It's actually the law. Mm. Did you know that's the weapon? So, um, what 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 he does? That's what you see. So he's very subtle. He he tries to he tries to use the law against you, and that's why Jesus hated the Pharisees so much. That's why he didn't like them because they they were do they were they were they were in the ministry of the devil using that very weapon of the law. 
So instead of, you, the, instead of the law being what God designed it to be, to turn us to Christ, they were now using it to block people from, from coming to God. But that's another day's teaching. So I just, I just, so we now know. So when you are ignorant of the devices of the enemy, he, uh, I, I, I read something um, where a former psychiatrist, a former psychiatrist, he said three quarters of the people who are in mental institutions are there because they believe they've committed an unpardonable sin. And this wasn't a Christian. It wasn't a Christian who was. It was just a psychiatrist who observed from his his dealings with people, you know. So that just shows you how the enemy operates. Um, so we 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 that's why we have to be conscious of the. So we don't try to uh, to we we don't try to to be right with God by works. We don't try to be right with God, you know. And that, that's what the, the Pharisees advocated, uh, being right with God. And that's why Jesus said, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the Pharisees. When I first read that as a young believer, I thought they fast twice a week, so I have to fast three times a week. <laughs> that's exactly the very thing that Jesus is, 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 is teaching against, the very thing. What I understood it to mean is the very opposite of what it means. So I thought, oh, if my righteousness is to exceed the Pharisees, that means I have to do more good deeds than they. I have to fast more than they fast. I have to give, if they give 10% tithe, then maybe I should give 15. You know, if they do this, you know, all the things they boast about. I, I, I go to church every Sunday. If I, I, I pray, I, I pay my tithes. I do this and do that. But when Jesus said, except your righteousness exceeds that of the Pharisees, he wasn't saying that you should do great more works than they did. He was saying you have to have a different kind of righteousness. Their righteousness is righteousness that comes through works, the works of the law. Your righteousness is that which comes through faith in Christ Jesus. So that, that, that's what exceeds. That, that's the righteousness that exceeds that of the Pharisees. Uh, it, it doesn't involve more work. It just involves believing. Am I making sense? Yes, you are, sir. Thank you. Thank you. It was very quiet, so I thought maybe I'd lost everybody along the way, but this, yeah. Okay. So I, I hope that answers Baby Girl's question. Um, just you, you, if you, you have to be aware of your enemy, you have to know. You have to know your God first, more, and more importantly, but you also have to know your enemy. Um, so uh, Jesus was very clear. He was very categorical. He knew, he knew his enemy, and he refused. He, he, he quickly put him in his place. He said, "Get thee behind me, Satan! You are you are a snare to me, because you you value carnal things. You value earthly mm -hmm. things more than spiritual things. Mm -hmm. You know." All right. So that that was Jesus made it very clear that I understand the devil. The devil is is is, is he has is not a spiritual being. He's not spiritual. He doesn't. He, he cannot understand spiritual things. So he operates from the he operates from the position of the mind and uh, mm. the the uh, and the flesh. You know that's where he operates from. But the just shall be led by faith. The just shall live by faith. And as many as are led by the spirit. So. They say the devil is not a spirit. <laughs> the devil is spiritually dead. I, I don't think we get that. We don't understand that. He's spiritually dead. Mm. He's mm. he's he's spiritually dead. So he cannot not understand. So he knows the scriptures, but he does not understand them. Mm. Yeah. No, there's no light. Mm. There's no light. No revelation because he's spiritually dead. Nor can he have light. He cannot mm. have light. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. Um, but we and, and 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 that's one of the things why he hates us so much. That's why the devil hates us so much because we are like God. <laughs> we are like God. We have the nature of God. When when we become born again, we can see. Mm. We we mm. actually can see. We have eyes that can see and ears that hear and hearts that understand. So mm. when that's why a baby a, a baby Christian is reading the scriptures and he gets illumination. 
mm. illumination that the devil can't get. And devil is upset. Ah, oh, look at this one that just gives life yesterday. Quoting scripture, knowing scripture. So he comes to you from the position of the flesh. Change these stones to bread, like Belgi was showing us in the scripture. Change it. To, he said, no, 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 that's carnal. That's carnal. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of the Lord. The Lord. Mm. Mm. So um, he get that's why he hates us because we we are we are like God we 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 see things and we know things that he cannot know and it's like ah how do they know that they're not supposed to know that they, I mean after all that I've thrown at this person he shouldn't be thanking God he shouldn't he should be looking at it from the perspective of how bad life is how things are not working and yet there he is praising God and saying. I don't understand what is going on, but one thing I know is that God is working it out for my good. Hallelujah. So I can see good ahead. There's a joy set before me. Mm. Amen. Amen. So never underestimate yourself. Never look down on yourself. Never devalue yourself. When you do that, you are submitting to the ministry of the accuser. You must begin to see yourself as God sees you. See yourself as the word sees you. Say of yourself what God says of you. Mm. Victorious, more than conquerors. Alive. Righteous. Holy. Good, kind. Saints, everyone. The fact that you committed the sin doesn't make you a sinner. I hate it when I hear people saying we are all sinners. Oh, no, 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 no. We are not sinners. We were sinners once. I'm no longer a sinner. I'm a saint. I'm righteous. <laughs> the old things have passed away. All things have become new. I'm born again. Regenerated. New genes. I have the genes. I, I, I am a new creation. There's a new reality. I'm a new species of being. I'm different now. Live in the same old body, but no, 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 no. That doesn't, that, that doesn't, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, it's, ah, I, it's a long, long, long time since, since I was a sinner last. I was a sinner 30 something years ago, long ago, long. And I, I do not ever intend to be a sinner again. I'm not, I can never be a sinner again. I'm a saint. Do you know that even if I backslide, I, I can I, I can't backslide into being a sinner, I, because I, I I have been saved, so I'll still be a a, a a saint that backslid. That's what I'll be. I will not be a sinner. A sinner is somebody who has not accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. That's what a sinner is. So I can never be a sinner again, never. Nor can you, nor anyone under the sound of my voice. None of you, no, none of you is a sinner. We're saints. We're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We're sons of God. We're heirs of the Father, joint heirs with Christ. Overcomers, more than conquerors. I feel a preach coming on. So I hope that answers Biblical's question. I will um, pass it to pass her. It on. She's, not, she's not here yet, but yeah. But yeah, on behalf of her, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. I think we, we still have room for one more question before we finish. Was there something else on the... Father Tim, anything? Was there anything else on the cards? Um... No, Pastor, I was just going through that question again, I think. Okay. Show the next Check to see that there's any, no, no, no part of it that was left unanswered. If yeah. there is, let me know how we can, we can look at it. Yeah, I believe we've covered it. I mean, it, it, mm. it's the impact consequences of being ignorant of the devil's devices. Um, you know, mm. what is the impact of consequence? I think we've. Yeah, okay. 
Yeah, there was a question you were going to ask us, Tim. I don't know whether you want to start it now, and then even if we don't uh, finish it, we can push it to next week. I I I am unable to find my, uh, my your notes on it. Okay, all right. That's, but that's I will okay. I will post it against next week. So that's going to be our sort of homework for for next week. I I had it last week, but the realized that we weren't ready for that yet. So I will mm -hmm. I will find it as soon as possible and and then share it. Okay. Uh, for, for All right. So does anybody else have any question they want to ask before we close? Anything that's been on their hearts? Anything you've been reading, didn't understand, or something you wanted to share with us, or something you wanted us to be encouraged about or with, or something that troubled you and you wanted uh, clarification? If there is, please feel free to bring it up. Okay. Okay. Good. All right. If no more questions, we, we have five minutes left. So we'll have our usual announcement and reminder that we when when we gather, when we worship, we remind one we remind ourselves to, to give. So should you intend to do so, please make your your way to your relevant giving channel and and do it and if anything else go to the chapel of life website um, and then life academy is this saturday so be be prepared be ready and um, tell as many as you can as well so that would be an awesome yes I, I'm, I'm i'm a little bit disappointed about attendance at Life Academy these days. We used to be very excited about it during lockdown and the numbers were really growing and we were really enjoying it. But now everybody seems to be going back to, you know, and one of the beautiful things is we thought, okay, it's, it's online. So everybody, wherever you are, you can, you can log in. You don't have to now make your way to a central part of London or anything like that to uh, but we're not, we're, we're now going back to, oh, here, yeah, I've got my Saturday, let me just, I think it's important, this is very important, and we used to also have a lot of, we used to bring a lot of those young people in, we don't do that anymore, we don't, we're not encouraging them, we're not, we ourselves are not attending, um, yeah, I, I, I would like us to, to become a little bit more serious about these things again um this saturday i'm going to be i'm going to be continuing we started to talk about uh working the works of the father and uh, we're talking about you know um it really is about evangelism that's what the the teaching is about so i'm, I'm going to i'm going to continue and this saturday what i'm going to be looking at is how to deal with some of the excuses that people make. So all the various, when people ask you different questions or raise different issues, when you're talking to them about giving their lives to Christ, we will look at some of those things. And you can come with any other things that you are aware of that people use as crutches or, or uh, excuses for not uh, wanting to give their lives. So we, we, we will look at that uh, and look at some other dimensions of evangelism. And yeah, so I, I think it's very important. Thank you, Pastor. I really look forward to seeing all of you this Saturday. And try to, try to come prepared so that we can put on our cameras. At least if you have wash your face if you don't want to and put your camera on. So even if you are wearing your pajamas or your briefs under your this thing, we all we only need to see your washed face. That's all. It's important, you know, that we start engaging, you know, again, because there's nothing like face-to-face -face contact. And that was the that's what Zoom has 
provided for us where we cannot come physically, at least we can. We can come on camera. So please try to try to come and um, come ready. Okay, the announcements over to you, brother Tim. Sorry, I just had to. Well, uh, thank you, Pastor. I think it's, um, I was just going to ask you to please round us up in prayer, actually. So back to you, Pastor. Okay, all right. Thank you, sir. Faithful Father, we love and bless you and worship you and adore you and thank you. What an honor it is that <laughs> the God of gods would call us his children, call us sons of God. Jesus put it this way, he said, I have said that you are gods. <laughs> Whoa, we are gods. <laughs> what, a, what, a, what, a, what an honor. We are made in the image of our father. We are in his likeness. Uh, so, Father, we thank you. Um, you. You called us that chosen generation, that royal priesthood, that holy nation, the peculiar people who are called to show forth the praises of the one who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Thank you, faithful father. We, you, and this year you emphasize that we, we, are, we are to diffuse this aroma, that, that nature, that we, we, we have to be perfect as our heavenly father is perfect that we are to reflect him in, in thought, in word, in deed, uh, in, 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 in demeanor, in character, uh, in, in, how we, in how we carry ourselves, in how we uh, reach out to, to, to everybody. Just, just having the mind of Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Lord, I, I, as we close, this, this, this scripture is just, just resonating in my spirit. You said, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Neither hath it entered into the hearts of men what God has prepared for those who love him. Mm -hmm. And that's where most of us stop quoting the scripture. <laughs> but the scripture doesn't end there. It says, but God has revealed it to us by his spirit. So it, it is the eyes that are not focused on Christ that have not seen. It is the it is the hearts in which Christ does not dwell that have not heard, uh, or, or that it, it is to those hearts that things have not entered. But God is revealing it to us. To us, it's not a secret to us. To other people, it's a mystery. It's a secret. It's 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 too wonderful for them to even comprehend. But for us, our eyes, God is revealing it by His Spirit. So we are grateful for the opportunity we have to be recipients of this great mysteries of God to, to which our eyes are being opened on a daily basis. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We bless you. Uh, Father, just, just keep opening our eyes. Keep enlightening. Keep enlightening us. Let the eyes of our understanding continue to be flooded with light. Yes. Uh, thank you, Father, so that we may know the hope of our calling and know the riches of the glory of our inheritance in Christ and know the exceeding greatness of the resurrection power that is resident on the inside of us. The same power by which you raised Jesus from the dead. That same power that is at work on the inside of us. Thank you, living God. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. God bless Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. All. Thank you, everyone.